<laughs> and you mean to tell me that Robin Hood is sent to lavish the undeserving poor with my royal riches? That is exactly what I mean to say. Doesn't he know the poor will just waste the money on something stupid like food? <laughs> Feeding the poor, your highness, is exactly Robin's intention. And what a fool he is. Two things happen when you feed the poor. Number one, you waste good money. Number two, you end up with a porky porky <laughs> Money has greater purposes in life than feeding the poor. He also plans on buying them clothes as well. Clothes? He wants to buy them clothes. Is the man mad? Have you ever seen a poor person stay in clothing? They mix rags with burlap, and the result is simply a fashion disaster. <laughs> Do you know that the money Robin had stole from me was to go to something very important? A diamond studded weather vane for the castle. Uh, How will you ever get along without it? I don't know. Thanks to Robin Hood, I shall remain weather vaneless, and the kingdom will be riddled with poorly apparelled porky poor people. <laughs> Sheriff, is there nothing to be done to stop this ruffian? He's incredibly hard to keep track of. The forest is so vast, it's almost impossible to try to find him. Well then, maybe we can come up with a way to bring him out in the open, to us. Impossible! Everything that man ever needs or wants is out in that forest. Come now, certainly there must be something Robin Hood wants that doesn't grow on a tree. I just wanted you to know that I have sent every carrier pigeon in England a flight with my message for the king. You will hear your despicable acts, and then you will pay. I wish you both runny noses. <laughs> your Highness, I don't believe she grew on a tree. Sheriff, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Ha 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 ha! Yes, but how shall we do this? I've got it. We will hold an archery tournament. Oh. The winner will receive the hand of Lady Marion in marriage and 1,000 gold pieces. Oh. No doubt Robin Hood will enter. He can win the woman he loves and help the poor poor people at the same time. I'll have all my messengers for the word of the tournament to every inch of the land. Word will be sure to reach the outlaw and his men. And the best part is, we don't have to worry about him winning. As we all know, you are the best archer in all the land. You have a perfect record, never to have been beaten by anyone. It's a gift. <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect. This is brilliant. Oh, I love me. <laughs> Your Highness, I ask just one thing of you as a reward for my actions. Name it, O Faithful Sheriff. I want Robin Hood in the wedding. I want him in chains, helplessly watching me marry his love. Help us to stop it. Then, after we cut the cake. Cake? Okay. <laughs> I want Robin Hood beheaded. You may say, it's an early wedding gift for the bride. Wish me a runny nose, will she? <laughs> sure. How oh, absolutely ghastly. A beheading? I like it. Oh, you and I are a fine team. Robin Hood will come out of hiding. He will be captured. You will marry Marion. I will dethrone my brother Richard, become king, and England will be ours. We will rule this country as we please. The people of England will do as we command or die. Oh, what a fun place for shall be to live. Oh, joy. Oh, he plays to no goody. Pretty dramatic, huh? I do say those are two nasty people. Prince John spread word throughout the land about the tournament, and as word reached the forest, Robin and his merry men were still devising a plan to rescue Lady Mary. No way, hey, get this, this is really good. We walk up with champagne, balloons, and this big fake check for a million dollars, and tell them they just won the publisher's clearinghouse. Stop it! Just stop it! Don't think of a plan! All think of a plan! Just don't think of a plan! <coughs> Robin, I've just come from the 
kingdom. Men. Twinkies! <laughs> Have your news for me, Fire. Have I ever? Look! Men, listen. His Royal Highness hereby decrees an archery tournament shall take place one week from this Saturday. The winner shall receive 1,000 gold pieces and the hand of Lady Marion in marriage. Entries must be postmarked by Sunday, void when prohibited by law. <laughs> Merry men, I have a plan. I shall enter this tournament, no doubt, for as we are now, I shall win, because I'm the best archer in all the land. I shall win the tournament. Mary, Mary, and give the gold to the poor people. Do you want to go the right way? Yes, I thought you'd like it. And even someone who's the very best at what they do must practice and work hard every day, especially archery. Did you get all that? Good. Now let the training begin. Begin training now, Robin? But it's Prince Black outside. It's 10 30 at night. What better time to begin than now? Well, hurry on, Hawthorne. I say it to you hence, be my hurry. Hasten hither. Hasten makes ways for henceforth lies hereafter. Hasten hither. Hasten hither hence. Huzzah! Huzzah! I had no idea what you just said. <laughs> see that tree over there? Yeah. You see this? Yeah. Go stick that on. Why didn't you say that from the start? It's the art of the language. Alan, my bow and arrow. Thank you. Now, would you like to watch me as I strike a bullseye for justice, men of Sherwood? Sherwood! <laughs> Robin practiced morning, noon, and night. And as his men quickly found out, his aim morning and noon was much better than it was at night. <laughs> <coughs> well, are you okay? Fine, boss. I always wanted to get my ear pierced. <laughs> Well then, glad to be a pal. Huzzah, huzzah! Oh, I'll get band-aids! <laughs> yes, Robin was indeed the best archer in the land during the day. <laughs> but as the days passed, Robin could not help but think how worried his dear Mary must be after the recent turn of events. As the days passed, I could not help but think how worried my dear Mary must be with the recent turn of events. He thought he should go to her and reassure her that he would win the tournament and everyone would live happily ever after. I must go to her and reassure her that I shall win the tournament and everyone will live happily ever after. Robin, I don't think you're getting the whole concept of the narrator, are you? You see, the point of me telling the audience is so that you don't have to. Yes, Towns guy, that may be true. But that would give you more lives than me. And as we all know, this is the sum of true tale of Robin, not the sum of true tale of the Towns guy. Now, if you will, have your attendant director friend take us to Lady Mary. Of course, sir. Mr. Technical Director, please transport my valiant friend and his enormous ego to the chamber of Lady Mary. <laughs> I don't have an enormous ego. I just happen to know I'm the most important person in this play. <laughs>